Hey everyone, in this video we're going to cover how to get the search path from binary trees. In a previous episode we created this search function in Python which is able to search whether a certain value exists in our binary tree which we coded up in Python. The whole idea is that this binary class is recursive so that the question is how could we find a number recursively in that binary tree and it roughly went as follows we look at the root of the tree and then we check whether the number we're looking for is smaller or larger than the root of the tree and if it's smaller we ask the left side or the left subtree whether it contains our value and otherwise we ask the right subtree if the root value or the value we are then at equals the value we're looking for then we found our value um, however Instead of doing a simple binary search and returning whether or not the binary tree includes the value we are looking for, we might want to retrieve the path to our value. So for example, instead of knowing that four exists in the binary tree, we might want to know that we have to go three, seven, two, four in order to get to the four. So basically a path. So let's go ahead and create a function path and add it to our binary tree class in order to retrieve the path to a specific value. And if the value doesn't exist, we'd want an empty path because I don't know, the path in this tree uh, to zero would be no path, which would be in our case, the empty list. Um, and the empty list is very useful to return since it's sort of like a, a base case, like adding an empty list to a list of other stuff um, doesn't affect the list that we already have. Whereas for example, if we chose to decide or if we chose to return something like none, uh, when something is not found, it might be less, you know, it's still, it's 100% possible, but it's less, um, it doesn't flow as well. Okay, so let's take a look at the search we have and how we implemented that. Uh, the idea is gonna be quite similar. So we have this empty list idea, or sorry, we have this empty tree or the, the, the current node or the current root node of this subtree doesn't have a value. And then we return false. Let's create our path function and also create this base case for that function. So we define a function called path, which takes in self and a value we are looking for. And we define the first base case for when the value of the current tree we are viewing is none, which is only the case if the entire tree is actually none, since there are no subtrees that have a value of none, because then they wouldn't exist in the first place. So let's um, check if our value equals none, then we want to return the empty list, right? So looking for a value in an empty tree returns an empty path because there is no path. Next, we have a similar case, which is if we actually find the thing we're looking for, right? So, and since we're returning a path and we're most likely, and the path is a list, um, let's say the number we're looking for on the tree on the right is 13, then we would still want to, we don't want to return the value 13 itself, but uh, a path would be the list containing the number 13. Or if we find the seven over here, we would want to return a list containing seven. And then the, the parent who asked this seven, whether or not uh, it could find the seven, will have returned another list to which we can connect concatenate the result. So let's add the option for if uh, if we found the value we are looking for. So if we find the value we are looking for equals the value, then we want to return the actual value we are looking for, right? So it can either be value or self.value since we determined they are the same. And I'm gonna put in the, well, maybe it's, maybe it's actually prettier if we do self.value. And we're just gonna return this since um, we can imagine that recursively we would append this to the result of the parents. The next case is again similar to the search. In the search we check whether we have to search left or we have to search right. So let's do the same for this path. So uh, we know uh, if we are here in the code or here in the path function that the value is definitely not none since we pass this. But the value we are currently looking at, let's say 13, is also not, for example, the value 4 which we're actually searching for. So let's determine if the value we are looking for is smaller than the value or the root value of the tree. And then we have to perform the same check as here, except we're gonna separate it out into separate ifs for readability. So we say uh, if the left side is, is equal to none, 
or there is no left subtree, but we do expect the value to be on the left side, then we once again know there is no actual path to the value we're looking for because it's not gonna be in the tree. So we also return the empty list, just as we did when we find that the root value of the tree is none. Else, if the left side does exist, we want to go ahead, we want to go ahead and ask the left side whether it contains that value and return that path. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna say the left side, the left side's path to our value, which would either be the empty list if it's not found, or it would be a list containing, you know, the way down. Uh, so let's say self dot self dot left dot path. So this is the recursive call to the path function asking the left subtree whether it contains the four. And we ask, give us the path to value. After we've retrieved the path to our value from the left subtree, we have to return that result, but we also have to make sure to add our own value. Since if we find the value in the current subtree, we just return it. But if we found it in our left subtree, we say, oh, it's the path of our left subtree, but we have to put our own value before it. So let's say 13 is the thing we're at and we find it in our left subtree. Then we take this path for my left subtree and we have to prepend this 13 because 13 comes first in the actual path to the value four. So let's do that. Let's say return. All right. And so we return the empty list once again, if, if the, uh, the length of our left side path is zero. Right, so if no path was found, return no path. <clears throat> and otherwise, prepend our value, and we're gonna unpack the path from the left side. So this basically means that we, well, we could also write it like this. <clears throat> Plus ls, it doesn't really matter, um, but for now I will write it like this, with the unpack operator, which will basically unpack this left side list and put it without braces inside this list. Perfect, so let's now do the same for the right side. If the right side equals none, we return the empty list. Else, we determine that the right side equals the right side, where we ask for the path. And once we ask for the path, we can say return the empty list. If the path on the right side you found doesn't exist, basically it returns the empty list. Else, we do the same as with the left side. We say, oh my God, great, you found it. Prepend my value and then add the right side. Okay, great. And this almost looks like a complete function. So if the tree, if the tree has no values, we return the empty list, which makes sense. If we found our value, we return a list containing the value that we found. If we think we might find the value on the left side of our tree, we either return the empty list if there is no left side, and otherwise we return the path that we found on the left side and add the value of the node that asked whether it's in its left subtree. And the same goes for the right subtree. Let's now take a look at using the binary tree class that we created, and we add all the values to create the binary tree that's on the right in our diagram. And because the trees are exactly the same, we could, for example, ask for the path to four, and we know we should expect 13, seven, two, and four. So let's do that. Uh, so we'll, we'll say, I don't know, uh, search value. So we can change it easier later, equals four. And then we can print path to search value. Right, and in this path, we say tree.path, and we ask for our search value. Perfect. So let's execute the program now that we finished our path function and we execute our path function on the number four of this tree. All right, so I see that I made a mistake in our path function, so let's go there. And we see that we accidentally took the length of value and the value is for example four, so it doesn't have any length. And what I meant to say is the length of the path that we found in our right subtree, just as we had here for our left subtree. So let's go back and run our program again. And as you can see now, the path to four is printed as 13, seven, two, and four. 13, seven, two, four. Awesome, so this isn't only useful for finding the actual path to the value, but we can answer two more questions with the path function. We can re replace our search function with the path function, 
since if the path function returns an empty list, we know that it's not in the binary tree. And we can also determine the amount of steps that it took to find that value. So let's add prints for those as well. All right, and to make it a little bit more readable on screen, uh, I'll add a path variable and we'll say that this path that we're gonna find is right here. And then we can say uh, the search value was found if well, the length of the path is not zero. So we can write it like this, else not found. And even better, we could make this empty and append it to the end, right? So it's, it's a little bit shorter, right? So we, uh, so we print whether the value was found and now we can also print the length or the amount of steps that it took to find that value. Print F steps to, to find the search value is the length of our path. And let's execute our program with our new prints. Awesome, so we now get some more information. Four was found. The number of steps to four was four steps. And by steps, we mean how many nodes we had to find or cross, including the node we're looking for. And the actual path to the number we're looking for is also printed. Hopefully this video was helpful in showing you how you can determine the path to a specific value in a binary tree. If it was, please leave a like. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments. And if you want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe. Peace.